Hello YouTube viewers, welcome back to another Retro TV, and today we're going to be talking about Super 8 Projectors, so stay tuned! Super 8 projectors, I might hear you ask. Yes, we're going to be taking a look at three different variations today on your Super 8 millimeter projectors. Now, you might be wondering, I'm in the market for one, so what do I look out for? So, uh, the first one we're going to do is an unboxing of a Cinerex Super 8 8 millimeter projector. Now, this one I found at a boot sale for five pounds, and uh, I thought, you know, I'll take a risk on it. So, let's have a look inside the box. Right, first thing we see is uh, we've got a couple of lamps in here. Now, these lamps are a bit of a funny uh, design lamp. And this one's like brand new in, in this packet here. So, they're like these little silver lamps that you can see here. Okay, now many early cheaper projectors came with these lamps because they didn't put out a lot of output. Uh, and the brightness in the picture. So we'll look at them later on. So let's have a look inside here. Right, we got a foam inlay here, so let's uh, drag it out. Ooh, get rid of the box. Hey, look, there's a newspaper in here from... Oh, 1983. So that's uh, probably when this was bought in 83. So, this one's came with uh, an instruction manual. Oh, we don't need any of that. So, we have our phone packaging going on here. So let's see what we got. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And there we have our Cinerax Super 8 Standard 8 projector. Now, this one here does not do sound at all. So it's only designed to run your silent movies. Um, so let's take a look around this thing. First here you've got your your threader switch and then your lamp switch. Pretty basic really, isn't it? So you turn it up to the off position and you got rewind and your lamp position on the back there. So uh, inside the projector, as we will pop this cover off here. Now what you're gonna be looking for in any of these earlier projectors is uh, how good a condition all this is. Now, if it's all yucky, gunky, and all that, you might be all right after a cleanup. So, uh, we're going to put our lamp in here. Now, these are a funny lamps, as I, as I just said. They, they pop in like this, and they're like a little screw type. And as you see, there's not much to it. It's just your film feed, film feed, <laughs> and your lamp, and uh, your running channel. So let's see if we can uh, lace this one up and uh, see where we go. Let's get some power here. Now this didn't come with power cable, but I have one prepared earlier. So let's plug that in. There we go. And uh, let's get a movie on here to run. I think uh, we're gonna run a little bit of Tarantula on standard eight, just to show you what the standard eight is like. So, uh, when you've bought your projector and you've got your power on, let's just see if she works. And, um, yeah, it's pretty much not, not much to it, really. This one does work really good, and the lamp comes on just as good. And this one here, you've got a speed dial here to do your speed. So let's thread this one up and see. So, plug him in here, we turn it to the first step. And we feed it through the front here, just like that. And then, it should, with the cover on of course, pop itself out the back here like that. So, let's run it up a little bit more. And hey presto, you're threaded. 
very easy to maintain these projectors if you just want a projector just to show your home movies or silent films and uh, you're not too worried about big production numbers these are very handy for that reason so it's all threaded as you see so uh, let's give it a run so we're running that the lamp is on and hey there we go simple as that showing on the wall here in very good focus so that is our Cinerex projector so you can find these on uh, anywhere they range from about 50 pounds upwards uh, depends where you buy it from. You could probably get it even cheaper at a boot sale or in somebody's lot. So, uh, we're going to rewind this film and we're going to talk about the next projector, which is our Sankyo Sound. So, here we go. Right, let's put Tarantula back in his box before he escapes again. Uh, he's come out a lot a few times, so yeah. So, there you go, Tarantula. So, we'll pop the cover back on. Just like that. The bulb's a little bit uh, warm there, so we'll just leave that in there for now. And then that should just clip in like that. So, next one, we're going to do our power source here. One of my favourite brands here on projectors, even though this is a middle range projector, not one of your top end high projectors, is this Senkyo series. Now, these range from anywhere to the 301s, 501s, 701s, super sound, super this, super that. But anyway, any of these black Senkyo projectors uh, are all basically the same mechanically. They just vary with the different functions on sound and quality. That's the only difference between any of these Senkyo projectors. Internally, they're all exactly the same mechanic. So, let's go and power this one on. There we have that. Let's switch this one on. And uh, we're going to put our take up rule up, reel on. And uh, we're going to undo the cover here just to show you the difference between the Cinerex and the Senkyo. So, as you see there, a lot going on here. We've got the sound heads at the bottom. We've got the halogen bulb in here, which is completely different from these little silver bulbs. Now, thing is I think these are harder to get than these halogen bowls man you can pick these up at Maplum pretty cheap uh, for about the same price as they were about 20 years ago so all right it's about 15 quid 12 quid uh, somewhere around there but uh, these bulbs here the halogens give off a far better light in your super 8 projection than these will ever do so these are very basic but mm, they might be getting a bit expensive so but anyway we've got all this going on here with the halogen bulb and we'll just give it a run And this one does work very well. Uh, very nice, clean light uh, on the screen over there. Now this one's a basic model. This one, this one is a 401, as you see. And uh, this only has the, the volume in it and the speed control. So it is the bottom of the lineup for the Sankyo projectors, but it still does the same job as some of the more ones. I've got a, uh, a 701 sitting up here on the shelf, uh, which sadly, um, needs a new belt put in it, but it does run like a trooper. And that one's got more in here with the mixing uh, knobs and, and volumes to put sound on. So we're going to thread this one. So now we're going to run Reptilicus on good old Kin Films uh, 200 foot. And let's see how easy this one is to operate just as well. So you flick on the main switch and all the automatic levers go down already. So you don't have to do anything with that. So. And there we have it. Comes out the back here. And away we go. And uh, if you've got a really uh, a good take-up reel, you wouldn't have to do this. This is not a, a proper take-up reel. So, here we go. Reptilicus. And you're at the movies. So, thank you projectors, I have to say have very good advantages as well. So let's just rewind this and I'll show you some different advantages that you can do with this projector uh, that you probably couldn't do with most projectors. Now this does have a good film size capacity. 
So you can put anywhere up to 400s, you can put up to 600 foot spools, and even the mighty giant reels, like uh, for instance, clear some space here. The massive wings, which I've got my full feature of King Kong on, and I can run this movie quite comfortably on two mighty I think thousand foot spools, I, I think they are, six hundred thousand. Anyway, St. Joe's, you can easily run these size spools on this projector. Now the back bit, you might think, okay, well that's not going to fit, because you've got this little arm here in the way. Now all you've got to do, and it does work, uh, is to take this arm off. You see it's got a little screw there, and you just undo that screw, and this little arm comes completely off and then you can run these big massive spools uh, which is a fantastic uh, little idea from this St. Joe machine so okay you just have to do some not modifications to the, to the projector except for remove that and uh, I normally just uh, hold this get this attached onto the side so it's not scraping the spool so there we go so what can I say about St. Joe projectors I've had them for well over 20 years and they've never let me down. King Kong, great movie. Yeah, so it's thank you projectors. I've had over 20 years and you know what? Besides uh, replacing a belt or two, and just keep, you've got to keep them maintained too. You've got to get a little bit of graphite grease inside and some, you know, lubricant them up from time to time. But apart from that, they will go forever. So thank you, good brands. Now, let's uh, put this one aside. My last projector is a uh, kind of a, an unusual one, um, and this one is really good for transferring your Super 8 films to digital. Yes, this projector is the Yuming RS3000! Oh, yes, it sounds like something from outer space. Maybe it wants to be, but it does look like a microwave oven from the 70s. Look at this crazy projector. Now, this is an ideal projector. It's a projector and a monitor as well, or a big TV, uh, as you can see here. Uh, and on the front here, you've got your control switches, your run, and your lamp, and your sound. Uh, here, you've got different microphones and tones and inputs on there. And on the side here... As I'll get a, 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 a light, some more light in there so you can see. There we go. Uh, yeah, so in there you can see it's got a double spool uh, format here. So one plays off this one and one takes up on that one. Uh, and down here, yeah, it's a bit crampy in there. You've got the focus and your framer as well. So what's this one going to be like? You can pop this little door open here and run it on a main screen or we can run it just on the TV so let's give it a run and see what the quality is and uh, yes we've got a bit of a War of the Worlds going on here. Now I have to say this is a really good projector for transferring film on because you can slow the frame rate down and not have any flick out when transferring your movies. Now this is a big beast and it does give off really, really good quality. So let me take that light off. Uh, and as you can see, it works really well. And the variable speed, as you see down to 18 frames a second and then up to 24 frames a second. And you can see it running there now, nice and clearly. There we go. And this is a very top-end projector uh, to have. Now, quite funnily, I got this machine for a little 50 pounds. And this was at a, a an actual film convention show where they sell hundreds of these things uh, for private sellers. But I got this for 50 pounds. Now, I've seen these go for a lot more money uh, well over 100 to 200 pounds on auction sites uh, but for 50 quid with a perfect Yuming projector working very well I have to say I am very impressed with it so let's just switch that off now
right guys there we go that's a quick look at some of our super 8 projectors that we do have here in stock we've got a few more lying around but that's just the basics of what to look out for when you're buying your next or your first super 8 projector and again the senior x1 that we got here very basic very dull light does the job there we go uh anything above in the mid-range here like the Sankyo's I mean you can get these ones now for around a hundred pounds uh, and they are rising uh, they do vary in prices and sometimes you can pick them up for about 70 quid uh, you gotta know where to look for your bargains to get these things but you won't go wrong with the mid-range Sankyo's uh, the Yuming as we show here the big microwave oven very good quality for that and even these are getting very hard to find uh, but again these are one of the best ones to do your film transfers on because of the screen and you can just darken it lightly and it's got a very bright bulb uh, to give you a very good quality. Some of the other top end ones uh, you know you, you've got your Ekis and your Elmos are uh, top of the range things now those projectors can range anywhere up to well thousands of pounds so it depends how high quality you want and uh, what you want them for so there we have it everybody, that is our Super 8 uh, projector collection for this show. Uh, coming up on our next one, uh, we've got more Super 8 stuff to talk about. We've got the Agfa family set to unbox, because that's going to be coming in the mail very soon. We're going to do an unboxing of that one. And then further on, we're going to be starting our retro video game series here, starting with the Atari 2600. So, for now guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and catch you on the next show. Bye.